Hi, and welcome to Quiltmas Day. I'm so glad you're here, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. My Missouri Star box opening and honest reaction is at the end of the video, so stick around to find out what I really think. And now, on with the show. Okay, you've seen the sewing room, now let's talk machines. In the house, we currently have five sewing machines. Five. Six if you count the long arm, and Casey says I have to, so six sewing machines and a serger. We're not going to talk about the serger today. Haven't used it in 10 years, but there have been several more over the years, including a 1954 Singer Class 1591 that I still regret leaving behind when we moved, but I digress. <laughs> I digress. Back to the present. First, I'll go through what I have and what I use and why, some pros and cons about each machine. Then I'll go through some questions to ask yourself and your dealer if you're looking for a new machine. First up, we have the New Home Janome Memory Craft 4000. This is the first computerized machine I ever bought and I still love it. It runs like a dream and it is just a delight. It is just, everything works beautifully. Now it belongs to Anna, who loves it as much as I do. Next is my FAF QE4, Quilters Expression 4.0. As I was quilting more and more, I wanted a machine that had more space, maybe had dual feed, would cut my thread, and would sew faster. So I was holding this list of, you know, wish list in my head for months, just thinking about it. I went into the sewing machine shop to get something for the Janome, and this machine was for sale, barely used. Somebody had traded it in, bought it, and then immediately traded it in for an embroidery machine. I walked out the door to the car. Casey said, do they have what you need? I said, yes, and then some. <laughs> it does all the things I wanted, yeah, to a point. No machine is perfect. The features I love on this FAF, the best thing is the hover feature. When you have it in needle down position, when you stop sewing, it lifts the presser foot just like an eighth of an inch so you can turn your work underneath it. And this is oh so nice. When you're doing machine applique or curved, well, curved anything, then the presser foot automatically drops when you press the foot pedal. After I've been sewing on this machine for a while, I always forget to put the presser foot down on my other machines. It has the dual feed, which is sort of a built-in walking foot system, and that always worked fairly well. Things I don't love about this machine, it's big and it's heavy. It was hard to transport to retreats or so end days. It's no longer fast enough for me, and that's not any decline in the machine. It's just a factor of I want to sew faster than the machine will sew. And when you've been sewing at speed for longer than 15 minutes or so, it makes a clunking noise. This is actually common to this machine. Several of my friends have it. They all do it. Another thing is the menus are not especially intuitive to get to things that you need, but it's easy enough to use and it's the machine I use for, well, anything that isn't straight stitch sewing. When we moved here to Texas, I found a dealer and I went looking for the Industrial Juki DL8700. The one Donna Jordan sews on, 5,000 stitches, Per minute and I found this instead. I love Janome and this is my main squeeze, my Janome HD9. I love it more than a person should love a machine. It's fast and it's tough. It'll sew through anything and it works like a dream. I still think about that Juki Industrial and it's 5,000 stitches per minute, but I like the stitch on the Janome better. Things I love. It's heavy. So when you're sewing, especially when you're sewing fast, it doesn't like vibrate itself off the table. It does one thing and it does it very well. It's quieter slightly than the Juki TLQ10 and the stitch in my opinion is nicer. It has a large bobbin and a separate bobbin winding motor so I don't have to unthread to wind a bobbin, which saves wear and tear on the machine. It's easy to clean and easy to get at all the parts. Things I don't love, it's heavy. It makes it hard to transport for sewing days or retreats or 
anything. And it's big. It has a non-standard bobbin size. Since I piece with the same color most of the time, it's not really a problem for me, but it might be a concern for someone else. That's it. That's all I don't like about it. The next machine is my Elna, which is a Janome machine underneath, travel machine. I had a Jim Gold, which I loved, but it got destroyed in the move. So when I needed a new portable machine, I got a closeout deal on this Elna. And Elna, it's Elna branded, but it's a Janome made machine. I looked at three machines, two brothers that were adorable and perfectly serviceable, but I chose the Janome with more features than I really need because, because I can't see on the other two machines. This one had better light. It's perfect for what I wanted. It does, like I say, more than I more than I need it to, but it does what I need it to, which is allow me to carry it. Now I know you've seen it in the background, and I do have a featherweight. It's in need of some love from a vintage repair specialist right now, but it's lovely and it's a delight to sew on. It's quiet, it's tiny. I can use it in the living room when we're all watching TV, when it's you know working properly which is not now sadly but okay y'all listen closely because I'm gonna spill some tea about the ever sought after beloved featherweight you don't need it it's not that special I know scandalous but here's the truth is it beautiful yes does it make me feel kind of fancy and like I'm part of a club yeah, a little but guys it is slow that's generally not my jam. And the bobbins, the bobbins are comically small, which is frustrating. I picked mine up for a song many years ago, like $125, guys. But I wouldn't pay what they're going for these days. It is charming, but I don't use it as often as I anticipated. And it's just, you know, it's not all that. But these are the machines that work or have worked for me and my needs currently and over the years. Now, when people ask me what machine I recommend, I never give them a straight answer. Hang with me, hang with me. I respond with questions, lots of questions. And these are the top questions I think you should ask yourself and your dealer when you're considering a new machine. Number one, why do you want a new machine? Is your old machine no longer working for you? Is it outside pressure and a feeling that your machine isn't good enough or won't do all the things you need? If your machine is already doing everything you need, don't buy a new one. If you've actually outgrown your machine and need a more advanced or perhaps a less advanced, simpler machine, then think about a new one. Number two, what is your realistic budget? Machines are an investment. You can spend anywhere from $100 to upwards of $20,000 on these machines. And you need to consider what you can really afford and stick to this budget. Don't be pressured into something more than you need. Considering a used machine in good working order can expand your options within your budget, but don't pay for features you don't need. And that leads into the next question. What do you need? Number three, what do you sew? Do you only piece and bind? Maybe you want a straight stitch machine. Now the new straight stitch machines are higher end and they're priced as such, but a vintage machine will sew like a dream. A 1590 or 91, they're classics. They're easy to pick up for a song. Take it to a repair shop, have the wiring checked, and you can buy new cords and foot pedals for these things. Some of those old foot pedals are death trap, let me tell you. Learn to oil it and it'll run for 100 years. They're easy to maintain, easy to use, most beautiful straight stitch ever. That is something in the featherweight's favor. But do you want to sew other things? Garments, bags, things like that. Do you need zigzag or other specialty stitches? If you need them or want them, then those features you need to look for on your machine. Do you want to quilt on this machine? Free motion or walking foot? Does it need one or will it take one? If you want to quilt, the harp size, that's the space that I'm showing here. The harp size matters when you want to quilt a big quilt. 
Speaking of size matters, number four, where are you putting it? Do you have an existing cabinet that you need to consider? Will the new machine fit in? Do you have space? Does it come with an extension table or do you need or want to buy one? Do you have to set it up and take it down every time you use it? These questions will allow you to consider weight, general size, and portability. And once you have a general idea of what you're looking for and what your actual wants and needs are, number five, where do you buy it? Many have heard of or have had the experience of a grumpy, unfriendly sewing machine dealership. Now, I don't understand why this is, but it happens. I used to drive an hour across town in Atlanta past four dealerships to go to A1 Sewing because they were just amazing and kind and so understanding of a young family on a tight budget. Knowing this, you have options. The best of which is to find a dealer you like. That's the dream, right? But it isn't always possible. Maybe there's not a dealer in your area or there's not a dealer that you're willing to deal with in your area. Do your research and order from a reputable online dealer or, or a reseller, then find a repair shop that you like or can live with because that will be an excellent resource. If you want to mostly maintain your machine yourself, you might want to steer away from a computerized machine as they are a little less DIY friendly. If you are shopping with a dealer, Ask them about maintenance and what services they offer to new machine owners. Will they train you on the machine, especially if it's one of those fancy pants machines? Do they include a free service at the one year mark? Some offer an in-shop discount if you've purchased a machine from them. Whatever it is, find out what's available and add that to your considerations list. Knowing the general answers to these questions will give you a good basis on choosing a machine that fits your actual needs and wants and your budget. Now, I know that was a ton of information. So here's a quick rundown and I'll put this list in the description box below as well. Number one, consider why you want a new machine. Number two, consider your budget. Number three, consider how and what you sew. How often straight piecing, garment sewing, quilting, free motion, Things like that. Number four, consider your space or portability needs. And number five, consider your dealer and repair options. These questions will prepare you and give you the groundwork that you need to buy the sewing machine that fits your specific needs. I hope you found it helpful. Coming up is the day 14 box opening. So hang around for what's in store there and I'll be right back to see us out. Quilty Advent Box, day 14. Feels like charms again. Oh, pretty. Wandering Ways by Stephanie Orga Organis, Organes for Andover Fabrics. Very pretty. 42 pieces, floral and bright colors. I love florals and bright colors. Charm pack, day 14. Thanks for hanging out with me on day 14 of Quiltmas. I am so glad you're here and I'm having a great time. If you're having fun too, please leave me a comment down below and tell me Hmm, tell me what your dream sewing machine is. Is it one you already have or something still off in the future? While you're down there, like, share, subscribe, and don't forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy, and I'll see you next time.